Hello and welcome back to our character switching tutorial. In the first part, we got our characters switching between each other, but they don't really move around much. So what we're going to do in this video is do a very short, quick turnaround of how to make these characters follow you when they're not being possessed by you. Now, what we're going to do is a very simple shortcut of making the characters follow you. But by all means, you can use this with behavior trees or state trees, whatever it is you want to use for AI, this will still work for that too. Just make sure you put, swap it out where it's relevant. So let's take a look and get our characters running around with us. So last time we made our character switching. Our characters can switch successfully, but as you can see, our characters that we're not controlling stand still. So we're just going to make some basic AI for them to just follow us and, and stay near us. Um, so let's get on to that. I'm going to go and add a nav mesh to my scene. And do nav mesh bounds volume there is and stretch it out across our level hitting p to preview it and see how it's looking yep happy with that and hit p again to hide it so the ai control for our characters here if we open up the parent class of these we can do something quite simple so you've got a possession event an unpossessed event so what you can do is when this thing is unpossessed this will trigger and tell it to they have ai control so on unpossessed here we're going to check the old controller which would be should be our uh, player controller when we're unprocessing it and we need to tell it to run towards the character okay this by the way could be any behavior tree could be anything from our ai series Check out that if you want to do more complex AI, but I'm simply just going to get my guys to just to follow me wherever I go. So for this, I'm going to do AI move to as an option. Now with this in mind, we need to have like a sort of loop of logic to handle the AI movement here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple custom event here and we'll call it follow player and put that in to AI move to. The pawn will be itself, and the target actor will be get player character. The acceptance radius is how close are they going to get to me before they stop running towards me. So I'm going to put in a value of uh, 100. Let's do, let's do uh, 200, actually. And when it's successful, we then want to call follow player again. So it just keeps going round and round and round and, until it is happy with what we've got. So on unpossessed now, if I call follow player, nothing will actually work because when you unpossess it, it doesn't yet then repossess it with an AI controller. So what you do is you do spawn controller and you'll see spawn default controller. What this does is it spawns the default controller assigned in the class defaults and possesses it. So we go spawn default controller and then follow player. I then want to tell at the start of the game to tell them to follow player. So I'm going to go up here and on begin play on get controller, the cast to play controller is going to foul for those that we're not controlling. So we go to cast fouled here and I'll tell it to follow player. Again, that could be some AI thing like run behavior tree or whatever, but that's totally up to you. So let's now go back to the game. As you can see now, they're going to follow me where I go. And if I hit tab, the red one is now following me again. Switch to the green one. Okay, perfect. Let's work in the right little treat. Now, when you are dealing with multiple characters, you have two things to manage. You have to manage the player controller and the player characters themselves. So anything unique to each character, you want to put on their character class. So maybe like a unique inventory each, for example. But anything that is shared amongst all three of them, you have to do make sure it's on the player controller, not the character. Super important because you don't want to be stuck wondering where stuff is. Um... So you might actually find it actually beneficial to have inventory that's shared, for example, but they may have unique abilities. Okay. 
So just keep that in mind when you are designing a system with multiple characters, how to handle that sort of stuff. And as I said, if you want to do more complex AI, do check out the AI series where we go into a lot more AI stuff. Um, and you just take it to run a behavior tree instead, or slate tree, whatever you want to use. And yeah, you can easily go through there. Now, if there's anything in particular about switching player characters that you have, uh, that you want to try and do as feature-wise, uh, do let us know in the comments, and I'll try and put together a third part where we go over anything else that people want to see about this. Uh, but yeah, it's not too difficult to put together, um, and it works quite well. So there you go. Now, as I said, if you have any questions or if you've got any particular requests for features of this player character switching sort of tool, then do let us know in the comments below. I'm always eager to see what people want to know about. Um, if you want to support the channel and vote for our next video, just like this one was voted for, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. From just $1 a month, you can uh, donate and support the channel and get access to all of our content early, plus take part in our creator challenge, plus many other benefits. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.